Hey guys, today I got a video on how mechanical governors work on small engines. This is a 12 horse Briggs off a of riding lawnmower, but the principle is the same for any type of engine with a mechanical governor. Now most smaller push mower engines have what they call an air vane governor that works off the air coming off the flywheel. But the basic principle is the same. Once you understand how this works, it'll apply to just about any type of governor system. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go over all the parts here. And now obvious, the motor is sitting upside down with the crankcase cover off the oil pan. This is a vertical shaft engine and you can see by the carburetor it's sitting upside down. That's just to show you better. First thing you start with, you see this here, that I'm moving here with the screw in it. That's your, it goes all the way through the carburetor. This is your actual throttle plate that opens and closes a valve inside the carburetor controlling how much air and fuel get to the cylinder, which will control the RPMs. This would be idle right here with the screw up close here, and that screws your idle speed adjustment. Most small engines idle at 1800 RPM. And this is wide open throttle right here. And these engines are governed at approximately 3600 RPM, so the throttle never opens this far if the engine's sitting there running. When you get in thick grass, when the governor kicks in, it'll give it more throttle to keep the RPMs constant. It's connected to a rod. It runs behind the carburetor and goes over here to the governor arm. You can see right here, it has this little spring it's supposed to hook in that little hole. And the governor arm runs up to here. I've got another video on how to adjust the governor. I'll put that in up here at the top so you can check that out. Uh, pretty simple really. And this is where your throttle cable hooks. And it's connected to a spring. You see that spring right there? That's your governor spring, which controls tension on the governor arm. Now, that's all the external parts of the governor. You follow the governor arm inside, it connects to this. You see right here, so I'm moving all the governor parts by doing this. It's a good, a good angle on how the linkages go. And this piece right here serves two purposes. First of all, probably the most important purpose it serves, it's your oil slinger. Most of these small engines don't have an oil pump, so this rides in the oil sump. This rides in the oil sump right here. Take the camshaft out and I'll show you how it sits there and runs. I showed this in another video, but since we're on the subject, I'll show it again and give you a better idea of how it all works. And this is your camshaft here. And these gears right here, you see them in, go mesh up with these gears on the crank crankshaft. So the engine spins clockwise, so this will spin counterclockwise. You can see how the oil slinger will be slinging the, uh, slinging the oil all, all over all the parts in the engine. And you also get an idea of how the governor works by centrifugal force. See how it slings out right there? These weights are connected to that rod right there. I'll show you better by pulling on the rod. You can see how that works. So the centrifugal force while the engine's running is always pushing that out. Okay, with all that in mind, you can picture all this running. And by the way, this is your camshaft marks right here, your timing marks. You see the little dent in the crankshaft gear and in the camshaft gear. That sets your timing. Okay. So when the engine's running, the centrifugal force is slinging this out. And when it's sitting there idling, it's going to be all the way out. You can see it's idle, closed. So that'd be the, it's the weights pushing the governor open like this. Now, this is sitting there idling. But it's the same thing for full throttle. When you adjust this, you're putting more spring to overcome the force of the governor. The weight's swinging out. You can see it's a lot harder to stiff. When this is, when this is pressed, it makes it a lot stiffer. But the principle's the same for idling or full throttle, or medium throttle, what have you. It's the, same, it's the same principle. So you're sitting there idling.
So you got your engine running full throttle, cutting grass. Everything's doing good. And you're getting some real thick grass and the RPMs start dropping a little bit. The centrifugal force drops, so these weights come in a little bit. Therefore, you go from being all the way out to when it starts opening, it'll give it more throttle. And sometimes if you're in real thick grass, it'll give it wide open throttle, but it's maintaining the RPMs because it's under load, so it's never going to get past 3,600 RPM. So you're cutting grass, and you're getting thick grass, and this starts closing because its trifical force is lower, and the RPMs come back up because your linkage is opened up because the governor tension on this is dropping, so the, the spring can pull it back over. And I'm showing this one idle, the throttle set to idle, but it works the same on full throttle, except you have more tension, more spring tension on this. You see this is more or less gravity pulling that back, there really ain't no spring on it, very little. It's hard to get a good angle to show you all the parts moving, this is about the best you can get. You can see this is your throttle on the carburetor here, this would be idle, this is wide open throttle. You get your linkage running to your governor arm. It pivots right here, just a linkage that runs all the way across here, and it runs to this rod right here. And your governor runs off of this. So again, I'll go through it again just to make sure it's clear with you. Right now, it's sitting there idling. We've got the throttle set for idle. So all the force of the weights is pushing the rod so it's closed. So now, the RPMs start dropping, so your centrifugal force goes down so it opens the throttle up to compensate for the the speed loss all I'm doing with my fingers is spreading those weights that's what's controlling the whole linkage it's pretty neat how it all works if you can't see it all like this it's hard to visualize exactly how it works and when you get to your throttle up it, it does the same thing I can't really show it here because there's so much tension but you can see it'll do the same thing but the spring tension overcomes the force of the weights more you can see right there's a good example as soon as I start to start giving giving a throttle it closes I'm wanting to speed up but it's just sitting there closed you can see how that works that may not be the best explanation but that's about the only way I know how to explain it uh, so if you got any questions or comments, feel free to leave a comment below or send me a message. I always answer comments, but uh, lately I've been a little slow on answering it, but I will get back to you at some point. So I guess that's about it. So we'll catch you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.